All right. Um, so I'm going to make this video on the money I've spent building this schoolie and um, just kind of go through a spreadsheet line by line and talk about the purchases and give some opinions and maybe some things I've learned uh, along the way. If, uh, if you're thinking about doing this, I think this is interesting. I certainly was interested in this information when I was starting. Um, even if it's not exactly, you know, going to fit what you do. Um, but I hope it'll be helpful. So, you know, let's just go ahead and cut here and look at this spreadsheet. All right. So here's my fancy spreadsheet. Um, I purchased the bus at auction for $4,000 through Gov Deals. I don't remember exactly what the uh, auction fee is. It's something like 11%, but uh, my auction fee was $550. It was a long drive home, and so I logged my fuel cost, $150 in diesel. And I, because it was a long drive, I felt like I had to have insurance, and the only insurance I could find for it was a commercial policy. I went ahead and paid for that policy uh, for one year, and it was almost $1,000. If I'd have been closer, I would not have done that, but um, yeah, I just felt like I needed to, so I did. Title taxes and registration, $450, and a diesel shop service and inspection, uh, $2,400. Again, a lot of money, but it gave me a peace of mind that I felt like I needed. So there's $8,500 just uh, out the gate. Um RV sofa and recliner. I bought this new off marketplace. It was out of a fifth wheel guy was remodeling and the re the sleeper sofa I'm using, the recliner I'll sell on marketplace. Galvanized steel for the window deletes. I bought four sheets, um, $700 and it was hard to find. Uh, eventually I found it and drove over an hour to pick it up, but it was also pretty expensive. Rivets, uh, pneumatic rivet gun, Dicor, butyl tape, that's requirement, $300 there. And I bought plenty more of Dicor and rivets and butyl tape. That was just kind of getting started. Sanding supplies, paint prep, $50, more of that to come. Scan gauge, electronic. So the, the gauges in the bus on the dash were bad, and the scan gauge is an electronic gauge that plugs into the data port and gives you all of your info. So $150 for that was what money well spent. Needed a thermostat for the motor. That was $80. Um, the cruise control is electronically toggled on and off through the Cummins software. And so the diesel shop turned it on. And then I bought the switches and wired them in and a steering knob for $100. Coolant for the thermostat swap was 80 Toyota Sienna seats. The, uh, the second row seats in some of the Siennas um, had are awesome. Uh, armrests, seat belt, and a footrest that pops out to turn it into a recliner. And I bought two of these seats on Marketplace for $100, um, which I was just thrilled about. Schoolie.com. Um, I made several orders through them. They're great. Um, I, this order was $500 and was for their AC lift. It, it raises the air conditioner, uh, rooftop air conditioner up to give you a flat surface to mount it to. Um, it's a nice product. It works well, well built. But I don't like how high it raised things up. And in hindsight, I wish I would have um, done, dealt with the curvature of the roof with butyl tape and shims and and kept things lower it's not a it's not a deal breaker it's not the end of the world but it just kind of looks goofy i think but um but anyway uh front door hinge that's expensive that's an expensive part right there and then i got a solar diy book because i know very little about solar um and i needed to start somewhere that was 190 more decor uh rv window for the front door and a door latch for 350 12 2 with ground stranded marine wire. That's, I think that was like 100 foot that purchase, and I ended up with something like 350 feet for the bus. Um, 
so I made several more purchases of wire. Inch and a quarter square tube steel for the door build, $130. Insulation for the door build, and I put spray foam in the chair rails in the little gap where the chair rails are. Uh, I just wanted that to be done early on because I wanted to ensure that the spray foam would cure, and so I laid it in there in stages. Um, but anyway, it was $60. Rust conversion primer for the floor. Once it's gutted, you got to deal with the floor, and um, this was $120 for the gallon, but seemed to work well. Weather stripping, I have three doors on the bus, the wheelchair door, the back door, and the front door, and so this is weather stripping for those doors, and then some a box of wood to metal screws, $220. More rivets, $100. Subfloor, insulation boards, Loctite, uh, tubes of Loctite to glue it all down, $730. I went with Admin Tech. Um, I know that flooring pretty well, and it is awesome. Solar consultation with Chuck. Uh, this Chuck Cassidy, he's the best, and his consultation price felt like it was totally reasonable for what I got, the value I got out of it. Um, I did, I didn't, you know, he pushed me to do things I didn't want to do, spend money I didn't want to spend, because he knows what he's doing, and this isn't something I'm living in. This is a camper that I'm going to be using, you know, hopefully 12, 15 times a year. So, but the the consultation, I did feel like I left with more knowledge about, uh, you know, it just helped me form my game plan better. Uh, steel to build underbody storage boxes, uh, $900. I spent too much on that. Uh, I thought I would build three underbody boxes. I built two, and then I bought one. So I, I ended up buying more steel than I needed for that particular project. Fresh water, gray water tanks, and some heavy-duty drawer slides, $330. Nuts and bolts, $110. A starting coil for the bus, $30. Uh, the starting coil was sticky when I bought it, and you'd have to whack it with a wrench to sometimes to get it to unstick. I thought a new coil would fix that, but for some reason, the new coil sticks too. So I don't know what that's about, but it's really not that big of a deal. It's right beside the driver's seat, so... Okay, so here is where I bought the paint, and at this point, I'm almost $16,000 in, and I remember being kind of scared. I'm like, oh my God, you know, here I'm hitting the point where I thought I'd be done, and I'm, I mean, I'm not even really started, right? At this point in this build, I'd bought a lot of stuff for the outside. I'd done a lot of modifications to the outside. I hadn't done anything to the inside of the bus other than gut it. And, um, but anyway, so I went for a automotive paint, Duraflint, um, commercial single stage paint that I sprayed, um, under the cover of a neighbor's barn who was kind enough to let me wrap it with plastic and use as a spray booth. Um, and then I used a, a sealer from Southern polyurethane products and that was, um, you know, I mean, $1,800 in paint. Bolts, 40 bucks. This is the storage box I bought. It's a nice aluminum box. I felt like it was good bang for the buck, and I was real happy I got it. Exterior fixtures. I'm doing an out, outdoor shower, and then that's the shore power hookup, and then I put two outdoor spigots that are real nice. They're all flush mount. Real nice stuff um, for $440. I'll make a video that goes through and... You know, we'll look at all that stuff sometime, but 3M seam sealer for paint prep stuff, uh, 120 City water inlet and a uh, little hose adapter, 50 bucks. Shower mixing valve, $130. Again, I bought a nice one. It's flush mount. It's like a, from a, for a boat, really. Uh, buffing polishing equipment, 120 Paint prep supplies, 350 More paint supplies, 200 I went with the Iron Ridge Solar Racking, uh, $400 what I spent, and I have, what is it, they, I think they sell it in seven foot sections, or it's either seven or eight foot that you can get shipped basically for free, and so I put, I think, 14 feet, you know, and used like a, a, a splicing piece to join them together, and I really, I didn't think I was going to do solar for much of this uh, project until I got ready to like 
move inside and I'm like, well, I'll put the racking up there just in case. And once I had the racking, I thought, well, I ought to put some panels up there, you know, blah, blah. So, you know, it just kind of kept adding up. Exterior lights. This is the brake light, tail light, running lights, all that stuff. $200. Miscellaneous parts and more steel, $300. Plywood and framing supplies, $350. So here's my inside. I'm moving inside now, starting to frame. I'm at $19,000. And you can see what's coming next. The, um, the power station purchase, which is what I just, what I ended up wanting, really. Um, but up to this point, before that anchor purchase, most of this I'd been able to swing as I went, right? So I'm like working and buying this stuff as I'm working on it. And it's I'm, I'm probably like two years in at this point. So most of it isn't on credit. But as soon as I moved inside, I spent like $10,000 in just a few weeks buying uh, all kinds of very expensive things. And it kind of starts with this power station. When I buy this, it just steamrolls. I'm really, what it is, I'm trying to get ready for spray foam and I'm trying to just knock it all out as fast as I can. And this is where I start using more credit. So I went with the Anchor, uh, $1,500. Um, and I'll do a video on all my electrical wiring at some point because um, I think it's kind of fun and interesting. But another Amazon order, this is probably more electrical wire and other things, $430. Um, I needed to buy some mounting rails off eBay for the Toyota seats, $240. More Amazon supplies, $550. Don't remember what that is. So I got two air conditioners in the thing. Uh, one is a Coleman Roughneck uh, uh, rooftop unit, and it was $1,700. And then the other one, I bought a Pioneer RV underbench unit. It's a like 9K BTU heat pump, and it's you know, I've got ducks that I can run to the driver's seat and to the bathroom. And we'll look at all this in another video. But I think I'm I'm pretty happy with it. I looked at the mini split situation. and They're awesome. But ended up for ease of installation and time um, kind of ruling that out because I wanted to mount mine underneath the bus. And it was just going to be a, moving a lot of things to make it work. So I didn't do that. Uh, diesel heater, uh, that thing works great. It's awesome. Four hundred fifty dollars. AC to DC transformer, sixty dollars. Plumbing supplies, one hundred eighty. I had a forty-eight volt lithium-ion battery that um, can uh, can serve as like a um, expansion pack to the anchor. So this is a connecting cable, so I can use it with the anchor for forty bucks. More plumbing supplies, one hundred seventy. Electrical supplies, five fifty. So the awning, I got an 18-foot Onlux off Amazon for $1,600, and uh, it's really, I'm very happy with it. It was the cheapest awning I found. And when I looked at Lippert and Rec Pro and, you know, priced all that stuff out, I think they're all kind of the same thing. It was a challenge to install, but on a school bus, I imagine any of them would be. And, um, you know, I didn't want to spend three. $3,500 on a Fiamma. Uh, so I, I'm happy with the Onlux. I think it's great. Solar panels. I got two 450-watt uh, solar panels off Marketplace. This was from a, a wholesaler. They're new panels that were scratch and dent, and I bought them from a lady that sells these out of her uh, barn. So 320 bucks. Felt like that was a great deal. No shipping because I picked them up. Rear ladder and Coleman soft start for the rooftop, $400. This is the spray foam cost, thirteen fifty. Uh, my estimate to buy the materials and do it myself was going to be two thousand dollars for the materials. And while the company maybe didn't do as good of an install as I would have, um, I just jumped at that price. I thought that was kind of a no-brainer for me, and it was done in a day. Uh, flooring supplies, doghouse insulation, one hundred fifty dollars. I went with the uh, tongue and groove cedar boards, and they look fantastic. And then I bought a staple gun and some more plywood for seven seven hundred fifty. On the walls, I kind of went down a couple different places thinking about what I was going to do, but settled on OSB and carpet. It's cheap. It's functional. I've got the studs behind it that I'm going to hit when I install my cabinets. So I'm not really worried about that. 
Um, and I think it looks, it looks good and it helps with sound. So pretty happy. Um, in my layout, my, um, refrigerator opening ended up being an odd shape, which forced me to look at camper fridges. And so I bought the 12 volt Dometic eight cubic foot fridge, um, more money than I'd budgeted and, you know, more money than I thought I was, I thought I was going to buy a 120 volt, you know, residential type fridge, but it just, I couldn't find one that would fit this opening uh, except for the really small dorm units. So that's what I did. More, uh, seat track stuff that, uh, I had to buy off eBay to make the things work. More OSB carpet. Uh, this is carpet tiles for the wall. And I tapped into the airlines to put in, you know, like a, a, a quick connect that I can use for $380 for those things laser level and more airline supplies, $80. These receptacles um, for the electrical and then some melamine for finished stuff, $50. And then what I've got here is I, I put a 30 amp service outside my basement. So I had to buy some wire and I didn't, I neglected to add the other air conditioning unit that cost me $1,000. So the total that I've come up with is around $33,000 and I, I'm close. I think I have about 2000 more to go because I've got to buy mattresses for the bunk beds and I still have to build the cabinets. Um, and there's some other things, but I think from here on out, I'm paying out of pocket for what I need and I'm close. I'm really close. So when I'm done, I'll have a, you know, a finished schoolie for around 30, maybe $34,000, you know. So that's all the info I got for you. If you got questions, let me know, um, and I'll do my best to answer them. All right, hope you enjoyed it. Thank you.